Hey, everybody, welcome to another amazing segment of the Black Girl Encourage Her. I am your hostess with the mostest, Shaniqua Inspires, and y'all already know. But let me forewarn you, I got a man on the show, you guys, <laughs> and it's not my brother. So I am excited. You know, I'm always excited to bring my guests up to the stage, but we got a man. So I want to forewarn you, ladies, so you're not clenching your pearls, okay? So let's get ready to hear some words of encouragement from a brother. I'm going to go ahead and bring him um, to the stage. Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, what's up, Dr. Shaniqua? <laughs> Good to see you again. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. And I snuck in the back door, but uh, instead yes. of you know, me here. So I'm glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. We welcome you in. And as I was telling you, sometimes it's great as women. We love to encourage and inspire and empower one another. But it is something when we get a man's perspective in, it helps us to just kind of balance off what it is that we're seeing and how it is we're thinking. So I'm honored to have you on as a guest. Now, I know a little bit about you, but please share with us all who Chris Creary is. Yeah, well, first of all, I love that intro that you have for your intro music. Yay! I was here sitting, listening to it and just bopping my head to it. Vibing I, along, right? Yeah, yeah, because I love music, right? As you could probably see from my, my guitar right behind me there, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. Nice. Um, but yeah, my name is Chris Creary um, from Toronto uh canada um that for those people who don't know where canada is just you know go on, look on the map if you're in the states and look up and, and you'll find canada nice. <laughs> but yeah i i love life uh, you know i like, like to have fun i like to laugh um i love podcasting um so what i do my daily job i work in technology but what i actually love to do is as I love to podcast. I love to connect with podcasters. I love to record, edit. I love everything about podcasting. And that's kind of where uh, I feel my my life, God is taking my life right now. Um, and it's just a blessing to be able to connect with people over this uh, medium of podcasting and be able to share stories, share ideas, share thoughts and encourage people through this, uh, through podcasting. And so in a nutshell, that's who I am or what I do. Um, I have a six year old and my wife, you know, we it's just the three of us and we enjoy life up here in Canada. Um, it's, and for those people who have never been to Toronto, it's not cold all the time. You know, it's really good in the summertime. Lots mm -hmm. of things to do outside, lots of restaurants and things to do. Uh, and actually this past winter, we didn't even get that much snow. So it's a good place to visit. I would encourage everyone to, you know, take a visit, come up to Toronto, you know, for a weekend, something in the summertime. Yeah, and have a good time. So, and that's basically me in a nutshell. Um, and I'm just happy to be here to talk to you about what we're going to talk about today. Yes. Awesome. Listen, everybody, we got to plan a road trip. We got to definitely go <laughs> up to see uh, Chris in Toronto. Um, and I'm certain there are a lot of things that we could uh, get into. But I really was so excited to have you as a guest. Um, as you mentioned, you are a podcaster and one of your podcasts is the I Made a Podcast podcast. So if you all are familiar, you follow what it is that I do. If you get my uh, wellness encounter newsletter, you sort of, this is him. This is, the one, this is the guy that was in the ad that I was promoting his show. I'm still promoting his show because I want you all to make certain that you go and you take a listen. So we connected. I was a guest on your I Made a Podcast podcast, and we realized that we have so many similarities. And, and one, you are a man of great faith. And I love to see that. Like it's one thing we're out here, women, we're carrying the charge, but it is so uh, necessary for us to see men of God who are standing up for their families, for their businesses, for what it is that God has purposed and called them to do. Absolutely. So one of the conversations that we got into when we really started vibing off of was we share a, a a favorite scripture in the Bible, and it comes from Matthew 25. So I wanted you to come and share some of your wisdom and how you've used that scripture as a guiding force in your own life. So tell us, why do you love Matthew 25 so much? What's, what's up with that scripture? <laughs> well, it's basically my story as to where I am right now in terms of finding 
where I find the most joy and pleasure in what I do in podcasting. Um, and actually, before I even get into the story, I went, you know, over my introduction. I forgot to even mention my podcast. So yeah, it's I made a podcast, which I had the the pleasure of interviewing you, which you did an awesome job. You knocked it out of the park with your Thank interview. You. Um, I'm sure people who are on your list have listened to it already, and it was great. And my other podcast is called The Faith Fight Podcast, which I've been doing for five years, five plus years. Um, and we're going to get into that probably a little bit more because it's part of my um, Matthew 25 parable of the talent, you know, life story. Yes. So, you know, I've heard that story and, and it's been preached so many times. You know, we've heard it here and there. Uh, we know that there was a, a servant who got, you know, one talent or one bag from his master. One got two and another one got uh, four, five, right? Mm -hmm, five. Yeah, five. Right. So we, we know the story. And then, you know, two of them did something with what they were given. Then one person buried it in the dirt, didn't do anything with it. And then we know the results. We heard, you know, the people who did good with and multiplied their ability. They heard, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Right. And the one who didn't do anything. Right. He heard away from me, you wicked and slothful servant. Get out of, I don't want to, you should have at least done this and, you know, invested it and I would have gotten some return on it. And it sounds really harsh when you think of it, you know, what that servant got, right? Because he gave back what he was given. He didn't lose it. He yeah. gave it back, right? But when you think about it, and this is kind of like where I, you know, get my, um, where this scripture really speaks, of, speaks about to me, like we all have something. Mm -hmm. I got a little quote. You can't see it now, but on my wall here, I got like, you know, little frames with motivational things on it and scriptures. And one of the things that I have up here is says that we are all creative. We could either use our creativity to make excuses mm. or use that creativity to make something happen. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all the matter of what we choose to yes. use our creativity to do. Right. So if I look at the parable of the talents and if I had to ask you, Dr. Shaniqua, if you had to look at the person who had one talent or the other one who had two or the one who had five, which one would you say that you identify with most? If, if I had to ask you. Absolutely. I would definitely say I was the one with the five because I feel like I have a lot of gifts and a lot of talents that I've been given. Mm -hmm. um, so I think and I'm, and I'm glad you asked that question. Check. You're, you're so accustomed to being. I know. I'm sorry. Podcasting. You're asking the question, but I'll throw it back to you. Which one do you identify with? Right. And and that's that's I, I, I and that's where where I want to go. Right. Because yeah. I identified like throughout my entire life. I was never the fastest. I was never the tallest. I was never, you know, I was good in school, but I was never the smartest, never got the top grade. I remember even, you know, getting into a competition when I was in college with one of my classmates to say, okay, who's going to get the highest mark? And I studied my hardest and, you know, we put something on it. I think this was before, you know, I started to, you know, became, become serious about my relationship with God. Uh, and I think I put like $5 on it or something. And um, I said, I'm going to get a better mark than you on this exam. Watch. And I got like 96% on the exam. And I was like, see, I told you I could get better than you. And then she came, she showed me, I got 99. And I was just like, oh, rats. Ooh. So, <laughs> Ooh. so even, even like I was never the best at anything. So throughout my entire life, I was always like, what is my talent? What is, what is the th one thing that I am good at yeah. that, you know, kind of differentiates me from everybody else? What, mm -hmm. am, what, what is that one thing? Right. So at this time, you know, just a little bit after when I, you know, lost that bet, I gave my life over to Christ and I started to become serious about my faith. And I started searching and looking, you know, for, uh, to understand who am I? Because that's the question that everybody asks, right. As believers, what's my purpose? God, what did you put me here on earth to do? And we can look inside of ourselves and see the abilities that we have and find those things out. For some people, it's obvious, right? Like I went to uh, a basketball game. I know in, in the U.S. you guys have the All-American High School basketball game for mm -hmm. that, that the kids play. In Canada, we have something like that too, right? I went to that game and I saw these guys playing basketball, these, these young high school kids, and they were amazing, Right. There's one guy, he's seven foot seven. Wow. Like he didn't even need to jump to grab the rim, you know, but you see, there are certain people who their gifts that they have. Right. It could have been something that they inherited from their from their parents, like these, you know, athletes, you know, big, tall, strong. It's very clear mm -hmm. to see what your gifts are. Other people. And this is the majority of people. We don't know 
like we cannot clearly see what our gifts are. It might be a struggle or a challenge to find out what those gifts are. And that's the ballpark that I fell into, right? I was like, well, Lord, what's my gift? And, you know, it goes back to what I said before about we are all creative, where right? we could either make excuses or make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm falling in love with God, seeking after him, serving in church. You know, I, you know, not to, I'm not the best at this, but I could sing a little bit. Right. So when I started to get serious about church, I had so I felt something in my heart and, you know, during praise and worship. And I would look up there like when I was a, a baby Christian, I would see them up there worshiping, you know, having fun, praising God. And I was like, I want to be in the choir. Mm. I want to go sing. Right. So I went and I auditioned, you know, and the choir director was like, yeah, cool. You're a tenor. Go up there and, uh, you know, you, you can sing. Stand beside these two guys up there and you're a tenor. Right go, you know, welcome to the team. And I was just like, really, that's it? And they were, they were like, yeah. So I'm like, great. So I got into it and started singing tenor at my church. This was probably like 2005, long time ago now, right? But now we're getting into the parable of the talents, right? So I've identified that I can sing or at least hold a note. Okay, <laughs> okay. Sing in pitch, right? In, in the right key, right? Um, but it didn't stop there because... From that, I wanted to get better. So with the parable of the talents and the thing that when, when you read the parable of the talents, all three of them, all three of those those servants from that story, they worked. They did something, right? Mm -hmm. They did something. The one who was given two did something and he got four. He worked. The yeah. one who had five, he did something and he got five more. He worked. He did something. The one who took the one and he buried it in the ground, he also worked. Mm. It was effort that he took to bury that thing in the ground. True indeed. Right? So, so we got to think about this now. The mm. Time is going to pass. We have, once you've identified something, right, it's that identifying it that is the work. Yes. You have something. You got to do some uh, reflection, thinking, meditating, praying, asking God, seeking, seeing what your heart is saying. That's the work. Mm -hmm. We need to look into our heart and see what makes our heart jump and beat and what we have a passion to do, right? And that led me to serving on the work on, on in part of the choir, right? And the work now I, I identified that, yeah, there needs to be some work because I love this, I'm having a good time doing it, and I'm feeling so great as I'm sitting up there in the choir, but I want it to get better, yeah. Right. I saw some of the other guys up there singing. There were some men who who were worship leaders at my church at the time, and they were great. Right. And then some of the other people, and I was just like, man, I could do better. I could do better than this. Right. And this is, again, my heart saying God putting it in my heart. Yeah, Chris, you could do better. You can you, you can do that too. put some effort into work and, and, mm. and do it. Right. And, you know, I ask myself the question every now and then. And maybe people ask this question, you know, too. Um, God, why don't you just do it why do i need to do the put in the work Ooh, right yeah and you got to think about it right because it's when you are actually doing the work that you build up the skills to actually stay in mm -hmm. that place mm -hmm. right because if god just says like say for example if, if god walked up to you and we heard the story actually if someone wins a lottery and gets 20 million dollars yeah two years, three years, five years down the line, they probably lose it all because they don't know how to manage money, yes. right? So God is not going to just boop, zap you and make you, you know, this and that without taking you through a journey to build up the competencies and the skills yes. so that you can stay in that place, Yes. right? So I'm saying to myself, okay, so I need to get better at singing if I want to get, you know, get better. So what I actually did was... Um, I went out and I bought like a little keyboard, hmm. right? Didn't know how to play the piano, right? Didn't know how to play the piano. Uh, but I went out and bought a keyboard. And what I did was when we did rehearsals um, for choir practice, I would go home, listen to the songs, listen to my recordings, because again, being practical, this is what I was doing, right? I was recording the practices, recording how I sounded so that I can do the work when I get home, yes. practice it and so that I can get better. And what I was doing with the, with the keyboard is I was just kind of playing the single notes on the keyboard and singing to them so that I could make sure that I was singing in the right pitch, right, mm -hmm. to the notes, according to the song. And this is me doing the work now, right? So if so, to answer the, I mean, I asked you the question earlier, which um, 
person were you and you said you're the one with five talents i was the one who had one talent mm. right but instead of burying that talent and doing nothing i did the opposite of what this guy did in the script yeah right i put the work in to invest it and make it better right mm. so here's what happened <laughs> and this is where it starts to get good right so i'm listening right i have my headphones on and i'm listening to music and you know as i'm doing this more repeatedly the music starts like i start to hear everything in the music right so not only do i hear my parts that i'm supposed to sing i'm hearing the melody i'm hearing the alto and the soprano parts and seeing where i fit in in the mix and all that what singing the tenor part i'm hearing what the keys are doing i'm hearing what the drums are doing the mm. cymbals the bass guitar all these other things and i'm listening to it i'm just like this is wonderful like every like i could listen to music and identify like every single instrument and this is what was happening as i was learning to sing better right to sing on pitch and stuff like that so if you see now if you see what's happening mm -hmm. my one talent being able to just sing a note is being developed into another talent to be able to hear music yeah. right and it's like i woke up one morning and i said you know what these songs doesn't sound too hard. Let me see if I could play them. And all of a sudden I just started, you know, I did some Google searching, you know, at the time and I started learning chords and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, months down the line, again, this is not overnight. This is work yeah. repeatedly. Right. I learned how to play the piano. Nice. Right. Wow. So I'm learning how to play chords and play melodies and stuff like that and put things together. And again, so this is not this is me with my one talent investing in it, putting the effort into it over time mm. and seeing the results. Yes. Right. OK, so this is progressing. And as I am worshiping in church, right, they are seeing that I'm getting better. Right. So they say, hey, Chris, um, so and so tenor is not here today. Why don't you come and sing in the front line in the microphone? Right. So, again, this is because I have put in the work, developed the competency to be able to hear, you know, what's going on. I've been, I guess, you know, promoted to the next level. Right. Right. And I'm I was able to stay there because I was able to develop the skills and the competencies to be there. Right. And this, again, parable of talents, add into what you have done, invest in it, making it better so yes. that you can be at that next level right now say for example if they put me there on the first day and i went and i sang one service at church and i was all over the place yeah they would have put me back in the choir demotion yeah. right yeah exactly. exactly get in the back because you can't hold a note right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but because you know i invested it developed it and worked on that gift i was able to be successful at that level yeah. right but that wasn't it right so you know faithfully serving and that's one of the things i guess anyone who you talk to who knew me from however long back they say that one thing about me is that i'm faithful right mm -hmm. i was faithful continuing to serve every single week always there on practice always putting in my time my effort and my energy and i know you like that because yes. that's, what you call for, <laughs> that's what you that, those are the three things that you talk about with um the parable of the talents right yes. putting in those things in to develop my ability and over the course of time now i had a friend who she used to play the guitar or took lessons i don't know how far or how deep she got into it because i didn't even know she was playing the guitar mm -hmm. but she was moving back to um uh ghana i think it was and um she couldn't take the guitar back with her so we were just having like a barbecue one sunday afternoon after church and she was saying yeah i'm gonna go back home you know to my family and you know so i'm trying to get rid of some stuff and she had a guitar and she looked at me and she's like chris you're a worshiper here you take the guitar and I was just like, okay. <laughs> so I didn't know how to play the guitar, right? I love listening to the guitar. I love the sound of the guitar. And this is God saying, okay, here's the next level, right? The next um, stage in adding to, right, the, 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 what you have. Because yes. you have been faithful with what you've been given before mm -hmm. in developing, working it, and growing it to give him glory, hmm. right? So God is saying, okay, here, here's the next level, right? And I just want to pause there for a second because, you know, most of the times we think about it, you know, the parable of the talents. And one of the things that it says is God, had, uh, the, the master gave to them 
each according to their ability. ability that's right? right. Now, I don't know if this is the correct way to um, study or look at this scripture or that specific phrase where it says God given them according to their ability. But I, the way that the Holy Spirit spoke it to me was, Chris, I gave you one ability because I know you have the ability to multiply this one and bring back more. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just what the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. Again, the, the Bible scholars here and those who study the scriptures, they can probably get deeper insight on it. But this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me about yes. this. And this is what was happening in my life. Right. With that one ability that I have, that ability to just hold a note. Right. And sing, you know, in key. Right. And I worked it and developed it and multiplied. So now if you look at what who I am, I can sing. Um Again, not going to be on, you know, Sunday's best or American Idol or anything like that, but, you know, just sing to, you know, serve God and worship him. Right. I learned how to play the guitar, uh, wow. learned how to play the piano um, and I'm singing on the, the praise team or front line uh, at church on, on nice. a Sunday. And I'm just like, OK, let's keep going. Right. So I have the guitar and I'm putting in work and I have to confess. Right. Because I think oh, to be 100 percent honest and real with everyone, it's not easy. Yeah. And the guitar, I was sitting for a long time collecting dust mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and you know i it, it i mean i would love to come up come up here and say dr shaniqua i was faithful and boom i did this and moved here and did that and da 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 but you know that's a perfect True. scenario but yeah. not everybody has that story and i don't have that story right yes. because that guitar was sitting idle for a long time come on somebody it yes sitting idle for a long time uh actually so it wasn't until last year where I said to myself on my birthday, I was just like, and it was a big birthday for me. Right. I was like, you know what? I was, I was doing some self-reflection, you know, of my life and seeing where I am. And I was just sitting right here actually. And I looked at the guitar and I said, you know, what? I could, I've been messing around with it and I understand the fundamentals of the guitar, but I can't really play it fluently. And I said to myself, you know what, before my birthday comes next year, Wow. I'm going to be better at that guitar. Right. And I, and that was, well, that was two years ago. And over the course of that following year, I was able to actually invest time uh, mm -hmm. and money mm -hmm. to take lessons to get better at the guitar. So nice. work in progress with the guitar, but that's just where I am right now. So I can play a little bit uh, and I understand it a lot more than I did when I got it, yes. but it stayed idle for a long time stayed idle for a long time but while that was staying idle i was still actually progressing in other things right so there was um a time so i wasn't married at the time when when i was singing on the praise scene where i left off in the story earlier but at this time i was you know there was a men's group that we had at our house at my house uh, i had a nice little condo and um we had this men's group where we would come through all the Christian men would come and we it's called, it was called my brother's keeper. Nice. Right. And we would just come through and we would talk, share men's stuff and whatever, and just talk and share insights to encourage each other, to build each other up, to, you know, to help each help the men be like, you know, like we mentioned it, like you mentioned at the beginning to help the men take their position, yes, their godly position and stand up and do and be the men of God that God has called them to be. That's what this group was about. It was wonderful. Right. right. And this was going on for years. And we met once a month at my place. It was a great time. I owe a lot of the growth and development in my life to that group and the men in that group. And actually, a lot of them right now are like my big brothers that I, you know, talk to regularly, my mentors. Nice. Wonderful connections in that group, lots of growth and lots of testimonies of not only myself, but other people from that group who actually learned a lot and applied a lot into their lives. Now, throughout this time, as that group was going on, so I'm learning how to play music on the piano. Uh, and I'm saying to myself, you know, it's not that hard to, like, you know, create a song, create music. Let me see what I could do here. Right. Ooh. You know, okay. <laughs> gotta see what, what I can do. So I jumped on the keyboard and, you know, meditating on, on the Bible and some scripture jumped, jumped in my heart. And I said, God, tell me to write a song wow. to write something. Right. So I started writing music, yeah. right? And I started putting some stuff together, you know, writing some music, um, putting some instrumentals behind it. And then again, my wife, call, my wife now calls it, the, my wife calls it the university of YouTube, right? I didn't know her at the time, but you know, this is what she calls it. I would go on to YouTube and I would, um, 
you know, learn how to do certain things, yeah. learn how to mix music and and what I needed to get in order to make things really sound good when you listen to it, to make it sound like something, you know, like you would hear on, on radio or download off of iTunes or whatever. Um, so that actually happened where I actually learned how to produce music now. So not only was I, so I learned how to play the piano, learned how to mix and produce music, learned how to write songs, right? Spent lots of times sitting and listening to the Holy Spirit as he was speaking to my heart and um, putting things together, putting songs together, and then being able to record it. Now, one of the big things that I, in like in my life, is like we are all here for a certain amount of time. Yes. And while we're here, we want to make impact. Hmm. We want to give God glory. We want to make sure that we can uh that that we could say that these people here were impacted their lives were touched and they were blessed because i was here because i finished my god-given right. purpose okay. i want to hear well done that good and faithful servant because i finished the work that god gave me to do here on earth right but i started to think about that and i was just like you know once i am gone once our time on earth is done right if there's nothing we leave back, then we stop impacting the world. And there are a lot of people who have already gone home to be with the Lord who are who are still making an impact on the earth with their ministry. Look, True. if you look at Dr. Miles Monroe, yeah, you know, and it, it is so um, like it just popped into my head now. He passed away um, the same day that my wife and I came back from our honeymoon. So shortly after we got married, he, that was when we got the news that he passed away. But if you look at his ministry through all the things that he was able to record and put out there on social and YouTube and yes. uh, messages for his ministry will live on well past him. And yes. the legacy of his ministry will live on well past him. So with all of that, I said to myself, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to impact millions of people or if I'm going to just impact 10 people. I just want to make sure that whatever it is that whoever it is that you want me to impact, that it's not limited to my time here on earth. I want yes. to leave back something. Right. So mm. that's where I kind of got the uh, the uh, encouragement to learn how to write, produce and record music and wow. leave it somewhere for somebody. Yeah. Right now, all that's all while this is going on, right? I'm growing and I'm maturing and I'm learning more about worshiping. And I create like a little EP with some songs that I wrote, gave it out to a few people. Yeah, I know. Eh? Come <laughs> on now. Come this on. Now. Long time. No, no, look, this was a long time ago. Uh, and it was a blessing to a lot of people. Um, I listen to it now and I really, you know, I've learned and I've grown so much wow. um, that like when I listen to it now, like, I'm like, oh, man, this is ugh. like I shake my head. I'm just like, did I really do that? It sounded like compared to what I could do now. It's yeah. not. It, but you could you see the growth. Right. Yes. But at the same time, at the time when I did it, it impacted people. And it's something that will outlast me. And what I actually started doing at that time was creating instrumental tracks for popular songs. So mm -hmm. here's what happened. Here's this, here's how that came about. So I'm serving on my worship team. I'm on the front line pastor identified that I have some skills and some ability, right? Some talent that I've been working on and developing. She was like, okay, Chris, I hear, I see your EP that you did. I hear these songs and your ability. Let's, let's give you something here to, to work on now. So she put me in a position of leadership on the worship team for Wednesday night services at my church, where I would be responsible for the songs um, I would be responsible for, you know, creating a whole list of songs to sing and the team that will be behind me singing. And I'll be leading the worship for th those come out for Wednesday night prayer. Right. And that was, again, the next step where God would say, OK, you've been faithful with what you've been given here. Here's the next step. Now, all the while we have to we see that I've been working and multiplying the one talent that I was given at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we get I'm getting, uh, you know, I'm worshiping on a Wednesday growing and learning and it's been it was wonderful 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 now i don't know i don't like i want to pause here because it's it was been a lot that i've mentioned i don't know if you have any questions or if you want to dive into anything because i Listen. know it was a lot so far 
it was it was a lot, but it was so good. And I hope the audience is catching everything that you are saying. So what's what's ringing in my in my spirit is you had one talent. You had one talent, but you had loads of ability. Right. And that is a beautiful thing, because a lot of times we do look at having the one talent as some sort of shortcoming where, oh, this person has two things that they're good at. You know, they can sing and they can dance. Oh, this one's got five things. Oh, Dr. Shaniqua over here. You know, she's a nurse. She's a, a podcaster. She's a speaker. She's a this that like I can literally, literally rattle off all of the things that. I have as my talents. And a lot of times we compare ourselves to what other people have and we actually feel bad about having the one talent. Oh, I just can do this. Mm -hmm. I just can do that. But literally it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And I love the point, the message, and I hope everyone picked that up. The message that you're giving is that you were okay with the one yes, because you had maximum ability mm -hmm. and God knew that. So he's like, I don't have to give Chris all of this stuff, you know, all of these things for him to get tripped up and get confused on what he should be working on. I'm going to give him one. But I know he has the ability to, as you just literally shared the story with us, you took that one talent and you did more than double. You did more than triple. You like you maximize that. And it's still going too. <laughs> still going. This man is over here creating EPs. He's got soundtracks and 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 all the, like the 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 possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. All from you with the one talent. Oh, I can hold a note. I'm not going to scare go, nobody yeah. off. I'm not going to mess the choir up. I can hold a note. And exactly. you literally have taken that and you maximized it. Mm -hmm. And normally I would ask you, like, where did you find the strength to do that? But you literally told us in the story. Like, I was engulfed in the story you were telling because it was your obedience. It was your um, just will to want to please God that helped you to keep growing it. Absolutely. And every time you took a step, God was like, oh, check him out. <laughs> Buying a keyboard, check him out. And now in, in, in addition, okay, we're going to give him a guitar. I can't wait till you tell us you got a band. You put the <laughs> band back together. <laughs> yeah. and, and we got to fly to Toronto to, to this concert that you're about to put together. Well, I mean, we don't know. Like, we'll, it's endless. It's I don't know what's gonna happen like in five, ten years. There's no ban yet, but as I as God as I continue to be faithful and serving and doing what I need to do, I don't know what God is gonna do, but I'm yes. along for the ride, you know, and it's been great so far. And you know, so all of this is happening. And one of the things that have what happened at that time was as I'm now serving on Wednesdays, the band was there, the, the church band was there. Uh sometimes they were not there, but then I was thinking again, because we got to remember that when we are, you know, working this one talent or however many talents we've been given, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you're not going to face problems or challenges, right. right? But those challenges are there to show you that you got more ability to make, yes. you know, to, to get another talent, right? So yes. what actually happened? So, so there was a time when, you know, we had a service and the band couldn't make it. Right. So I'm just like, OK, Wednesday night service band couldn't make it there. I was just like, OK, what am I going to do? Uh, the pastor wanted a certain song and I was looking online to see if I can find the song and I couldn't find it. So I said, you know what? Me, I could play that song on the piano. Let me see if I can make an instrumental right quick for that song. Wow. And then we could play it and still have that song. Right. And sing it and bring in the presence of God wow. in the service. Right. And through that now, it launched something else, right? Because I created that instrumental. I think it was that song, um, you know, that song Tasha Cobbs. It was from back in the days, Break Every Chain. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, that was the song. And it's a simple song to play, right? Yeah. So I was able to, like, in, like, a short time, just create it, like, a, a instrumental track for it. And again, with the mindset, because I wanted to bless other people with this instrumental, I put it on YouTube. Wow. Right. So other people could listen to it. Right. And I said, hey, if you need this for your church service where you don't have a band, just email me and I'll send you the MP3. Wow. And people start emailing me. Right. And I was like, oh, OK. If And I put a little message. If you need any other songs, you know, 
just message me, I'll make it and I'll send it to you. Wow. And that's what was happening. Like I was maximizing creating... your maximizing your ability. That's that's, that's what right. you're doing. You're right? maximizing it. I love that. So now not only am I impacting, you know, people in my immediate sphere sphere of influence, like directly mm -hmm. around me, but now this is global going out global because yes. you know you, the internet would make the world really small yes. you could reach so much people with the internet right so people were listening to it and i was looking at my analytics back then and i was seeing a list of all these companies or right. not companies uh, a list of all these countries yeah. <laughs> who were listening to things that i created right and i was just like wow you know that's amazing that i can now impact all these people and then reaching out to people people emailing me messaging me and saying hey can you make this and and send it to me and i was just like yeah sure no problem and it was fun right and i was you know some of them i didn't make i didn't do it to make money but some people actually said hey i can give you something to make that for me so it turned into a little you know um side business where i was making a little bit of money from it but i didn't never ask people to pay me for it but i just right. said you know if people are going to give me money to bless me for it i'm not going to say no right because right. one of the things when people when people want to bless you with something it's important that you do take it right because yep. they're them blessing you opens them up to yep. receive more That's right? right because them releasing something to you that shows that they're a vessel that God can flow through to be a blessing. Absolutely. So it opens them up to receive more. So if someone walks up to you and says, Hey, I want to bless you with this. And I hate when people do this. They, no, it's okay. I don't uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. No, you keep it. It's all, it's all good. I don't need it. Even though they do need it. Right. <laughs> if someone, if someone has, and if, and if someone says, God wants me to bless you with this, yes, I'm going to be like, all right, you have to, thank you. you have receive to. it, And pray God's blessings on you for being a vessel. Yeah. And as you continue to pour out to other people, God will continue to pour back into you, right? So that you can be a blessing and be a conduit for his blessings here on the earth. Now, that's another scripture we could talk, we could talk about. That I love bit. it. <laughs> I love it. Chris, you yeah. are so full of the words of, of encouragement. Now, I want you to speak directly to the viewers because there is someone who is watching and they were feeling bad. They were feeling bad because it's just one thing. They have just one talent and they were feeling bad. What words of encouragement could you give that? Because they straddling the fence. They're like, I heard everything. That's his testimony. That was great. That was spectacular. But what would you say to that individual who was is feeling bad because they have or they believe they just have, have one, one talent? Yeah. You are in the majority. Right? Mm. But most people in the world don't know or they only have one mm -hmm. ability or one talent mm -hmm. but it takes a, a heart of service yeah. and devotion towards god to find out more mm -hmm. find out what it is to focus in on what it is your specific ability or area of focus in it could be you know i'm not to say that it, it it is one specific thing but it could be a general area that you are very good at, yeah. right? But you won't find it out if you do nothing. Just going back to when I be first became saved, I was doing everything. I was serving everywhere in the church. If I listed it for you. So I, I, I only mentioned that I joined the choir, but I was also an usher. I was on the youth team. I used to go yeah. down and feed the homeless people uh, in, in my city every week. Um, prison ministry, all these other things. Yeah. And, you, and through serving, right? Through serving in all those ministries, you know what I noticed? The one thing that was in common in all those ministries, everybody was asking me to sing. Mm. Right? I would go to the prison ministry, um, you know, to minister there. They would say, oh, Chris, can you go up there and just lead, you wow. know, sing a couple songs? Right? We go down to this homeless place where we would minister to homeless people and feed them food. And the, the pastor would give a, like, one of the pastors would give a message. Chris, can you go up there and just, you know, sing, open up with a few songs? I was an usher one time, right? And like, you know, when people are coming into the church at the beginning of service, you know, they had me ushering. And the only place, the only section of the church they would give me as my section for when I'm ushering was the back corner where nobody really goes because during praise and worship, when people are coming into the church, I was just like totally lost in the worship, not even paying attention to people. <laughs> right. Right. And this is God saying, Chris, I, I see your heart for yeah. service. Your ability or your where I want to position you is worship. Yeah. Right. I want you to be a, one of my worshipers. Right. So it was through serving that I identified that worship and singing and, and music was 
the area where I should focus. So my encouragement to everyone else, just get busy and serve. God will show you, right? As you continue to serve with a faithful heart and with a pure heart, just serve and give your best. God will show you, you know, what it is that the area that you need to focus in on or the, the specific gift and talent. And it may not come right away, but it may, it will come eventually. Mm -hmm. And as you continue to do the work and seek after God, you will see that he will say, this is the lane that I want you to yes. be in. This is the area that I want you to focus in. This is the ability. This is a skill or the talent that you have that I want you to focus in on, work at to make it better and multiply it. Right. Because there's more in this area for you. But you got if you don't jump in the water, you, if you don't start serving, you will never find that out. But I just jump it. in. I love it. Listen, that was good to me. Um, I'm I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged, um, even though I feel as though, I, you know, sometimes I'm all over the place. But like you said, if you just keep serving and you're doing it with a humble heart, you're definitely mm -hmm. going to discover where God wants you to to be and to continue to birth that out. Um, that was so good. I don't want you to leave here without talking about your other podcast. Now we talked a little bit about the I made a podcast. You know, people can get familiar with that if they've watched the episode. Um, and I loved it. I thought it was a, a fantastic episode. I think it's a fantastic show. I'm learning a lot from um from Thank your you. show. So keep doing that. But I want to talk about the other podcast that you have, because like into myself, that was another thing we felt that we had in common. Like we had two podcasts. So one where we bring on guests and the other where it's you. So talk to us just a little bit, please, about uh, what is it called? The Faith Fight? Is that Faith what it's Fight called? Podcast. Yeah. And that's yeah, actually where podcast. the story actually picks up from where I left off, right? Because we were having these men's group meetings at my house and I got married, right? Which, you know, was a blessing. But what happened was when I moved, um, that group kind of fell apart, right? Mm -hmm. Because I wasn't in the same kind of area. And I guess uh, the location was really central to a lot of the, the men who were coming. So that group kind of fell apart. And that's where the idea of starting the podcast came mm -hmm. from, right? Mm -hmm. Where God put it on my heart, you know, you have all of this equipment now, right? Because I've been doing audio, producing music, I have microphones, interfaces, mm -hmm. um, all the software and everything. You could start a podcast. And you don't need to spend a dime. You have everything mm -hmm. that you need everything. to, you know, just do a little investigation, see what you need to get to, you know, how to do it and whatnot. And that's where the Faith Fight podcast started from. But again, as I mentioned before, with the guitar, I procrastinated a lot with that. It was years that I procrastinated. Like I had the idea, you know, I wanted to do it and God wouldn't give me no rest. Right. But Good. eventually, eventually I started the Faith Fight podcast and, and, and procrastination is like, you know, a lot, everybody struggles with procrastination. But what I figured out is what sometimes you got to trick yourself into doing things and getting things done, making it happen, right? Instead of making excuses, you got to make it happen, right? So what one thing that I hate is wasting money. I work hard yes. for my money. I don't like to see money getting thrown away for nothing, right? So my money has to bring some sort of return on it. So what I actually did is I tricked myself into starting the podcast where I signed up for um, a, on a hosting platform. I think it was Lipson or, or whatever where it is. I know that there are free ones, but I signed at the time. The only one that I heard of was Lipson and I signed up for it and it was taking $20 a month. Mm. This must have been like a September. This is before I started the podcast. Yes. I said, I need to start this podcast. God, I, I know you're putting it on my heart to start it. I need to do it. And, I, and procrastinating, procrastination is stopping me from doing it. So I'm going to trick myself into doing it. I'm going to sign up for the hosting and it and every month, when they took that $20 or whatever from my credit card, it burned me because nothing, there was no return on that $20 yet because yep. I was still procrastinating. So this was September, October a statement for my credit card came and I saw, you know, $20 and I was just like, okay, that hurt. One time, that one month payment where between September to October and no podcast was, was there, that $20 taken from me, I was just like, there's so much more I could have done with that $20. Right. And I know, I know it seems small, but that's just how I think. Right. Twenty dollars yeah. wasted. And from that, from November, from when November 1st hit, I said, let me put some work into that. Right. And then the November statement came and it burned me even more because I still wasn't ready to release the podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. So December hit and I was putting work in, had the cover, you know, created, had, you know, episodes written out, the topics and the scripts and everything. Yeah. And basically the Faith Fight podcast is 
from it, number one is from my devotional time. So things that I may be studying for myself, right, to mm -hmm. learn or to you know to understand more, or if it's something that the pastor talked about on Sunday and I wanted to dig yes. deep into it. I'm going and I'm, you know, as Christians, we should be, you know, spending devotional time every day and, you know, That's writing right. something down. So that podcast, right, the concept was from like the My Brother's Keeper men's group that I had. But the the content for that podcast comes straight out of like my daily devotions where I would mm -hmm. sit down, spend some time studying, reading something, asking the Holy Spirit, what does this mean? What can I learn from it? And, you know, throughout the course of a week, I would have like, you know, some notes on my phone that I wrote down for my devotional time. And I would say, you know what, this would make a good something for me to share on the podcast. And then I would just go and record it. And that's how the Faith Fight podcast started. And it's been going strong. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When I started, I was just like, God, what if I run out of content? What if I don't have nothing to say? <laughs> There's always and, content. And five plus years later, God hasn't disappointed wow. <laughs> there's always oh, something me. now i have taken breaks i've ha i have taken um like a i think a couple months break i usually take a break during the summertime just to uh reflect and recharge spend some family time as my life grew and i you know had my son and my yeah. wife you know spend some quality time go somewhere on vacation come back refresh and recharge in like the fall in the summertime uh in september um so i do take some breaks but for the most for the most part god has not disappointed with regards oh, to content man. there's always something yes. that he puts on my heart to share on the faith fight podcast and i said to god look i will do this as long as people are listening now i know as podcasters we look at the downloads and we you know want you know a million downloads or whatever the numbers that we have in, in our head but with the faith fight podcast i said lord if as long as one person's listening That's right or again this is going back to what i said before i want to leave something back and be a blessing to whoever it is that falls upon it or stumbles upon it when I'm long gone. Right. Uh -huh. And that's, that was my mindset. So I said, as long as, as long as one person or a couple people or whoever is listening to it, if they're still listening to it, I'll continue to do it. But if God puts it on my heart to say, okay, that's enough with the faith fight podcast, then I'm going to stop. That's right? right. But I said, Lord, as long as people are listening to it, and as long as you tell me to do it, I'm going to continue to do it. So I'm not Thanks. looking at the download numbers for that podcast and saying, Oh, <laughs> God, I pray for a million downloads. I, I need more people to listen. I'm not more. praying like that. I'm, I'm yeah. praying, God, thank you for one person listening to that episode. Yeah. That's at least one life that was impacted. Amen. You know? I love and it. And that is why you're going to keep getting blessed. That's why yes. the opportunities are going to keep growing for you because you can handle the one. <laughs> the one. <laughs> We know exactly. how to maximize the one. Yeah. Chris, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. We definitely have to have you on again because there was just so much uh, words of wisdom. And I hope that everybody was really impressed by it. We're, we've got your social media handles going. We're going to have the links in the description box. For those of you on my email list, you already know who Chris is. You got all of his information. You just got to go click on the links and get to listening. Do yourselves a favor and make certain that you're checking out both of his podcasts because there's a message in each of them that you do not want to miss. Chris, are you working on anything in particular that you'd love to share with us? Because we want to make certain that we're supporting you. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, it's in line with the parable of the talents, right? Yes. So I'm a podcaster. I've been podcasting. I have two of my own, but I, I'm also a podcast producer. Yeah. So um, at some of the links that you have that you can share with your audience, you can find all of the podcasts that I produce for other people. There's some other ministries that I, I produce podcasts for to help them get their message out there. Again, because I have this ability and this talent and I want to use it Yes. to be a blessing, to multiply what I've been given so that it can be a blessing to more people, right? So I'm a podcast producer. That's one of the things that I do. I help people, you know, who don't have the technical skills or the knowledge Ooh. in order, in, in the, but they do have a message yeah. and they want to start a podcast. I can help you do that, right? And I make it so easy. So th this other ministry that I, I work with, all they do is record their stuff and then they just send it to me in like a, 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 a transfer, a file transfer. And I just take it, edit it, upload it. And then their podcast is scheduled during the time. So that's what I do for other people as well. Uh, and again, it's a blessing to me because I love this stuff. I yes. like if I didn't jump in when I had that one ability, you know, to sing, I would have never gotten to this place. And yes. I would never know the peace 
you know, and, and the fulfillment that you get when you are like walking in your purpose, right? Like I love podcasting. I love connecting with people like this. I love sitting down, listening to audio and editing stuff. So it's, it's like I, my heart is full when I'm doing this. So, and it's such a blessing. I love it. Listen, listen, you guys got to make certain that you are checking out all of the work that Chris is doing. You're going to have his links get connected. Chris, do me a favor. Hang out for a second. Let me give the people their marching orders. Listen, that was so good. I am so delighted to have a new friend in ministry and podcasting. And uh, he was just giving us so many tips and nuggets, whether you want to do your own. And listen, Chris can help you make it easy. So even if you have a podcast in your belly, that's a calling that you know the Lord has been leaning in. You just connected with Chris. Easy peasy. I'm telling you, this is what this platform is about. And I am ecstatic about what's going to grow from it. So I hope you all have enjoyed this week's segment of the Black Girl Encourage Her. Please make certain that you are subscribing and you are sharing this out because you know what? You know somebody that's got one talent. And they were sulking around, they were feeling bad about it, and they need to hear these words from Chris that's going to encourage them to keep going and keep growing. So until next week, you all be abundantly blessed, and I'll see you again on the next episode of The Black Girl Encourage Her. Mm -hmm.